It's August 10th, 2021. I'm finally going to deal with the Apple HD 20SC, also known as a Disco Duro. This was purchased in uh, fall of 1986. I believe the price was about $1,100, and that was the student price. I powered this thing up a few months back, and uh, the hard drive in it was sort of working, but then it kind of crapped out on me. So I removed the hard drive and pitched it. And what we're going to do now is put a SCSI to SD silicon drive in it. Let's take a look at the box again though before we get started. There's the side. The other end. And the other side. Alright. Here we go. We're looking at the inside of an HT 20 SC enclosure. I have replaced the fan. It was kind of noisy. Got this from Mouser. It was like three bucks or something. And I didn't want to fuss with the connector, so I just cut it off the old fan and soldered it to the leads. We won't be using the SCSI ID selector because there's no header on the SCSI to SD. And I have cut out one little rung of the package here. There. I did that with my soldering iron. Here's the piece that came out. Oh, I took two rungs. And then I filed it nice and clean. So the way this works is the drive carrier goes underneath and the jack falls behind that hole. Okay, this was a little bit challenging. I needed to mount this USB panel mount doodad on the back of the uh, or on the top of the other side of the drive tray and support it properly. So I had some of these uh, Actobotics channels around, specifically this little channel, and I was able to mutilate it using my side cutters. And so what I've done here is I temporarily, come on focus, hot glued them in place so that I could backfill this gap. And once I backfilled the gap with the hot glue, I trimmed it with a straight razor, or whatever you call that thing. So now I will put it together. Okay, I got the little panel mount USB thing attached. I'm going to flick that hot glue off. Backfilling was uh, kind of challenging, but it all worked out. I'm just going to test the connector here. There we go. It goes into full depth and is not hitting anything. So I presume I have a good electrical connection. Alright, just need to clean that up. I'm ready to put it back together, I think. There we go. I've snapped the drive carrier in. It's held in by this one little ratchety thing here. And there's the USB jack. If I had more time, I would 3D print a couple little parts or maybe laser cut a little part. But that'll be fine. Everybody is worrying about where they're gonna go when the whole thing's done. 
There we go. I don't know why I had such a hard time getting it in. The only problem with this design is that that connector is on the bottom of the case. The thing is you only need to configure it infrequently so that'll be fine. Next step is to put the SCSI to SD drive in here. I was about to throw away the fan and I noticed that it's got a date on it. 860901 September 1st of 1986 All right, so I'm using a SanDisk Industrial 11 8 gigabyte SD card. This thing is supposed to be good for something like uh, up to something like 65 degrees centigrade. I don't know that it's going to necessarily last forever, but Imagine it's better than what I could buy at Walgreens. It appears that I have it all assembled. The LED lead goes to the LED header. That's the thing I'm most worried about here. This is not secured in any way. And it's not a super tight connection. Maybe I'll force those pins apart a little bit more so they hold. I don't know what else to say. New fan. SCSI to SD, industrial strength chip, USB cable, and header, or panel mount I mean. So I guess all I need to do is find a Centronic SCSI cable and test it out. I set the ID of the drive to 5, which is what the selector is set at. Here are the finished insides. The power supply was recapped in February of 2021, and today I installed the SCSI to HD connected the LED and installed a little panel mount mini USB plug and that connects the uh, exterior of the case or allows access to the uh, SCSI to SD from the exterior of the case. I'm reluctant to put the lid on because the way it's secured is really crappy these plastic tabs hold it on and they break very easily and one of them is broken. I don't dare open this up again. It's the moment of truth. We're going to boot the SE and try to initialize the drive. So what I've got here is a Centronix 50 to DB25 cable. The shielding on this cable is just amazing. It's sufficient to withstand a nuclear blast. And then I am going to put a terminator on here. There we go. So, mouse is connected, power is connected, power, power power on here. Okay, fans running nice and quiet. The ID on the external is set to five. Oh, I forgot about that. I put the shipping discs in. We'll need this disc. This is booting from a spinning hard drive.
Alright, so we want to run HTSC setup patched. That will see non Apple drives. Well, crap. I think that error was just due to kind of a worn out floppy disk. Every once in a while I get read errors on that disk. So I've copied the program to the desktop, so it's on the hard drive now. And hopefully we'll see device 5. There it is. So I'm going to initialize it. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and name the drive and install System 6.08 on the drive from Floppies and then I'll check back in. Alright, installation is underway. There's some writes. Installation has finished. I will now attempt to reboot from the HD20SC. How about that? Wow, that's fast. That was very fast. I guess I'm ready to put the cover back on. Once I do, I'm stuck. It really can't be opened again without damaging it. Here it is, the way God intended it, underneath a compact Macintosh. I have finished installing the software on the hard drive, the external hard drive. So I'm going to set the startup drive to HD20. There we go. Close. Restart. And we should be booting from the, the HD20SC now. Beautiful. And there's the internal hard drive. up desktop. There we go.